the role of caregiver is probably one of the most stressful roles in the country. What are you seeing, Lily, out on the front lines today that you didn't see a year or two, three years ago? Well, first I want to start by saying that I think that as the fellow panelists have shared, the story of neurocognitive health right now is a story of hope. The thing that I'm most excited about is the shift in our national conversation from genetics to epigenetics. What are we doing through our lifestyle factors and wellness to impact our gene expression? And that relates a lot to caregiving. Like Maria mentioned, 15 million individuals in the United States are caring for a loved one with Alzheimer's. One in four American adults is caring for an aging loved one in general. So what do people do? Because people come up to me all the time, people in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, who are trying to find a caregiver, trying to know how to find an educated caregiver. How do they afford a caregiver? How, how long can they keep a loved one in their home, what is the advice you want to give to people about caregiving? Sure, so home care assistants, um, we're the leading provider of in-home care across the country for seniors. And what we really share is we want to be a partner to the family caregivers who are doing this work. We're providing a lot of educational resources, but if you need additional help, I'm here to tell you that those resources are out there. You know, our organization, as well as others, helps you by providing professional care for your loved one, because often it's very stressful to go through that role reversal and go from being the adult daughter to being the full-time caregiver. And so I would say to take advantage of those resources that are out there. And like Maria mentioned, we've made available caregiver recharge grants. So if you go to homecareassistance.com slash women's Alzheimer's movement, you can apply for yourself or for a family uh, member or friend for a couple of days off from caregiving to attend to your own health and wellness, to do meditation, to attend a nutritional conference, to meet with your own doctor, to go to you know some sort of um, retreat. And I think that that's really critical for the health and wellness of our country. We're adding a lot of years of lifespan, but it's just as important that we focus on the health span of the generation that's providing care.